For those of you that have just come into this session and weren't at the last one I just worked on, uh, welcome, good morning. My name's Rob Brulee, I'm the owner of Curva Coaching. I own the franchise or the license for the whole of New York. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with Curva, it's a, a very technical way of, uh, that we coach our, our players. Um, with the game becoming quicker and faster <clears throat> and athletes coming into it, the game has become extremely technical. So um, we've been around since 1984 doing this. It's not something that we've just come up with over the last couple of years. Uh, in, if you look at Curva, if you go to the website, you'll see all over the world we've got Curva franchises or we've got Curva schools. Um, in Japan, we have 150 Curva locations, 150 Curva schools. So Japan has really taken it over uh, and the Asia's. Last year, the Women's World Cup, every single woman on that team graduated from the Curva Academy. Um, same with the Japanese, half of the men's Japanese team um, has come through the, the, the Curva stuff, the Curva Academies. Uh, and the same around the world in Australia. Uh, over in the US, we're statewide. We, we split up the US with states. And uh, originally, we were all up. Uh, Jeff sitting there up at Lake Placid for many years. We used to work up there. It was first brought over to the US, and that was kind of the flagship in, in, in the 80s with Charlie Cook, who was a very famous uh, Scottish soccer player. Um, played for Chelsea. He just got inducted into Chelsea Hall of Fame, one of the greatest players Chelsea's ever produced. Um, and... Uh, you know, they talk about money nowadays, they, they value him uh, in the $200 million bracket, which is phenomenal, stupid money. But um, he devised this system with Will Curver, who was a Dutch coach back in the 80s. And um, it's, very, it's, it's evolved so much. For you guys that are, are coaches, ladies that, have, that know Curver back perhaps 10, 15 years ago, it's unrecognizable to what it is now. But still with our beliefs, you know, we believe that, uh, that every kid can be coached, can be taught um, at different levels, going from, at the moment, we're coaching three or four-year-olds right the way up to, I was very fortunate to work with a lot of pro teams in England, where we're doing this stuff. They brought this in as part of their body to work. This team you're going to see here, Capital United, for those of you that do know me, um, I've been with Capital United 21 years. Uh, I'm, I'm not a coach there. I don't coach any teams. Um, Curb is a club neutral coaching organization. In the Capital District, we probably work with eight different clubs, from the Alley Cats, uh, Saratoga clubs, all the way through Burnt Hills, Gilderland, Rotterdam, um, Avril Park, different clubs we've worked with. So again, we go in, we coach, and we give them back to you. We do not run teams, nor do we want to. The kids love the curriculum. These girls from Capital United, I think they've all been with me since they were probably six or seven, eight years old. Um, for me, and I'm not being biased, Capital is one of the, for, for the girls' side, one of the most technical clubs around in the Northeast. Just recently, in the last three years, we had a girl go, it was top 25 in the country, Brittany LaPlante, who'd come out of Queensbury. She's a curva kid. She started with me when she was nine. You know, she went to Rutgers. She had every Division One coach in the country looking at her. And she went there because of a, a family alumni association. But from UNC, Anson Dorrance, all the way, they were all trying to get Brit because of, I think she broke the, the New York State high school goal scoring record in one year, 72 goals. Phenomenal goal scorer. And she's doing it at the college level as now. And hopefully she's going to go on to the pros when she graduates. So for those that see the first session I just did, you're going to see a totally different curve of session. But again, you're doing the same kind of moves, the same kind of ball mastery stuff. Basically what you've got to do is, th th there aren't too many tricks to coaching when you're doing all this ball mastery stuff, there's only so many things you can do with them. But you've got to brainwash them into thinking they're doing something different. So you set it up differently. Perhaps one week you'll set it, set it up in lines. Here you're going to see how we set this up. Um, I like to do a lot of multitasking as well. As I say to the kids in a one-hour session, I want you touching the ball a thousand times if we can. Because it's all about loads and loads of touches of the ball. Um, there's some printouts in a box over there. If you want to get one later, um, you don't have to write anything down. I'm going to give you all these sessions in that book over there. So it's, I know what it's like. I've been on that side of the fence trying to watch and write stuff down. So we've printed them all out for you. They're in there. Please take them as you go out or if you want to um, run over and get them now. So we start off then. Our topic here today is going to be, um, I've got to remember it is, passing, receiving, finishing on goal, fast break, attack. You know, everything that we want um, our players to do in a game. Curvers are very a very aggressive way of coaching your kids um, uh, to finish on goal, to be attacking, to be creative. 
But that's not to say we don't diminish the defensive responsibility. So here, just get six on uh, one orange cone, six on the other. In the printout that I've showed you, we would leave the balls in the middle. There's stations. There's one, two, three. We would leave the balls there, but on the gym floor, it rolls away. So this is, uh, I work with these girls once a week on a Sunday morning um, over at Afram's. They all come in as a group for an hour, and we get straight into it. We don't stop for an hour. And this goes all the way through outdoors. We take them through their outdoor stuff. So it's basically their all-year-round curve of training with Capital United. So what we're going to do here is they're going to bring their own ball out, but ordinarily I would leave balls in the station. So they just come out here, and as all they're doing, to start off with, you're going to be going from yellow cone to yellow cone. As I said to the last group, I've learned through trial and error to color coordinate everything. It's a lot easier. It'll make your lives a lot easier as well. Put, put colors down, and especially the lower down the ladder you go, especially with the little ones, you know, they can relate. Instead of just saying, well, just go to that cone there, they haven't got a clue what you're on about. But if you tell them, go to that yellow cone and then onto the blue cone and then shoot over there to the red cone, it helps them move around. It helps them. And it, it makes your life a lot easier as well. So as we're doing here, just side to side. We're just doing side to sides. When we get here, a little step on, and we just keep going backwards and forwards. Okay? Ready? Go. And they slowly move up the grid. The last thing, as I said, I like to do a lot of multitasking. So I get the kids doing a bit of dribbling here. And then they go to the outsides and speed dribble back. Go, move up one. This is a great exercise when you've got big numbers. I've had 50 kids on my own doing this. So you put more lanes down. Again, you can work in big numbers here. I would ordinarily, even in this group, I would have them in threes. But for this, go, move up one. So here they're moving the balls with them. Usually I would tell them to leave the balls and take it up there. Uh, we're just going to uh, two foot dribbling. Two foot dribbling in the blue cone. And then go to the outside, speed dribble back. Just go, two foot dribbling. I won't blow that whistle because it's a nightmare. So look here, now we've got the kids dribbling. We're multitasking. We're doing loads of stuff with them. Again, you can see how comfortable these girls are on the ball. Go! Again, <clears throat> we're getting them not to touch the cones here. Go! So you're just going to go through one time, one time only. Speed dribble back, speed dribble back, go! Yeah, you can go with her. And what I would do here as well, turn this into a race. You know, first one back wins it. So they speed dribbling back. Or without the ball, they'd be sprinting back. Go! So you only go once, only go once. Side to side, side to side, side to side. Side to side, there you go. Go! Again, we're warming them up with the ball. You know, they'll work just as hard here as if you had them sprinting, because here, they would sprint back there. Go! In and out, in and out. Don't touch those cones. Good, good, good. Big sprint. All right, good. We move through this pretty quick. This one, we're going to ball walk. Again, as I said in the last group, you'd be surprised how many times you touch the ball with the bottom of your foot. So you're ball walking forward here, ball walking forward, little drag backs on the way back. Go! Again, they're working just as hard as if you had them running laps around the field. Get them touching the ball while you're doing a warm-up. I'm going to move through real quick, but we would stay with this a lot longer. Go! All about getting reps. Think of ways how you can get the kids to touch the ball more. Go! Again, break it down. If you've got big groups, put six of these. I've had six or seven of these lanes going. One coach with 50, 60 kids. This time, I'm going to put restrictions up here. This is a lot harder than you seem. You can only dribble your right foot. Right foot dribbling only. Go! So now we're working on, on their inside and outside with their right foot. Right foot there and back. There and back. There and back. Speed. Go! Right foot dribbling only. Right foot dribbling only. Good, good, good. Go! Go! Don't touch those cones. Don't get tackled by the blue cone. Good, Kate. In and out, in and out, in and out. Quick speed, speed, speed. Speed dribble back. Go! Go! Quick, come out here. Racer. Quick, quick, quick. Hold on, stop there. She's on her own. If you've got another number, just bring one out. Go up to the next one, go up to the next one. We'll have a speed race out of you two. Not you. Oh, you can go back there. Go! Who's going to win it? Who's winning it? First one back wins it. Again, especially when you've got the boys. They have competitions with everything. 
Good, good, good. Right here is what we're doing. If you see the first session I did, you're going to see a lot of these exercises repeated here. So see what we're doing here is just soul rolling across. Just soul rolling across there, switch feet. And then we go back again. Go. Every step, touch the ball. Go. Go. If anyone wants to follow these sessions, they're, they're all in here. Go. Left foot only. Left foot dribbling only. Lefty only. Lefty only. In and out. In and out. In and out. Go. Left foot only. Go. 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 Speed on the way back. Go. Again, you, you're putting in a lot of reps, they're getting a lot of touches, and everything they do here, they're doing a game. All right, last one. And as I said before, I always try and bring stuff in that they can use in a game. Here, I'm going to split into three different sections. I would ordinarily get them to do the same thing each time, but because of time, um, we're going to split them into three sections. Just changing direction moves. So here, Right foot one way, left foot the next. You're just doing cuts. Touch, 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 cut. So here, touch, 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 cut. On this one, we're going to do the U-turn. We'll use the bottom of our foot. Again, you can give them a reason why they're doing ball walking. So here, we touch, touch, touch with the bottom of your foot. Just change direction. Then you do right foot one way, left foot the next. And then here, we're going to do step over turns. So we're here, we step, and we turn. Here, switch feet, we step, and we turn. Go. So you're doing outside foot, right foot cuts one way, left foot the next. Again, stuff they're going to do in a game. Practice it more. And warm them up with it. Go. Middle group is U-turns, sole of your foot. This is a great way to change direction, the U-turn. And you can see how smooth the girls are. They've done a lot of this. This is repetition for them. Go. Step over turns on third. U-turns in the middle. Cuts down there. Again, the beauty of this, if you watch this team play, they do this in a game. But it's, that, that hasn't come overnight. That has come over lots and lots, and especially on the girls, you've got to give them loads of confidence. Give them the confidence to do it. You know, if they mess up in a game, as long as they're messing up in the attacking areas, we can get back on defense and help them out. Here, we're just going to do soul rolling through there. Go! Soul rolling, you know the deal, cross your body. So we can switch it up here to another little exercise. Go. So roll in as you go through the blue. Go. Little soul rolls. Go. So rolls on there. Back. Go. Good, good, good. Go. Go. Good. So as I say, this, this bit in the middle, I would broken, broken that, broken that down even, broken it down into three different things, but because of time, we just showed you what we can do. Again, be creative in here. You can do touch scissors, step overs. You can do tons of stuff. You're warming the kids up. Look how, you, if their heart rates, I bet their heart rates are up pretty good, pretty good there. We've got a lot of blood flying around. We've got oxygen going. They've had touches of the ball. 
And this is, you know, they're enthusiastic about coming to practice. There's not a lot of standing around because they're moving here. Ordinarily, you say, we leave the balls and we get them sprinting back. They're going crazy because you make competitions out of it. You know, the first one past the yellow line wins it. In all my sessions, I, I've given up picking up cones, so I get the kids to do it. But do it in a, in a way that you're doing a bit of extra. So here they know the game. So the, it's the pick up the cone game. So what it is, and you can do it, the little kids even love this, we're getting them to speed dribble, do a change of direction move, pick the cone up. Wherever they pick the cone up from is where they've got to pass the ball back from. And then we've got to have good receiving touch. So not only have we got to have a good pass, we've got to have a good touch. So if I'm going to that cone there, I speed dribble, I step, I pick the cone up, and I pass the ball back. And the next person goes, yeah? So first team back with all their cones wins it, go. This is the highlight of their practice. They love it. The they do this all day. What's that pass? Cool. Speed, any cone you want. Again, we're getting some added stuff in. You know, a little bit of speed dribbling, a little bit of passing, a bit of receiving, and a little bit of child labor. Who's winning it? They got one, they got two. It's coming down to the last one. Who's going to win it? Who's going to win it? Good, good, good. All right, good. Oh, I think that's handball. All right, good. So again there, <laughs> loads and loads of touches. They're warmed up, hearts going. Everything we've done in that session, you're doing a game. You're using a game. Good. All right, so our main topic today is going to be uh, passing and receiving and then bringing that into, a, into a, a session. So we've got four blue cones. Get yourself uh, like three and a four on a cone. Three or four on a cone. There's another cone gonna go out there in a minute. <clears throat> All right. Again, later on, we're doing a fast action, um, fast break attack, finishing on gold series. But again, we've got to teach the players how to pass the ball. All of us, every single one of us, want good kids that can pass and move and receive. That's how we want the game played now. If you're watching the pro game, I think they overdo it too much, personally, myself. When I see a goalkeeper stand on his own six-yard box and roll the ball that way to the corner flag, I, I think it's insane at times. But that's what these, if you're watching Pep Guardiola at Manchester City and Conte at Chelsea, that's what they're doing. I think, man, if I'd done that in my day, I'd have got, I had my contract ripped up. You know, the goalkeeper's standing there and he's rolling the ball backwards to keep possession of the ball. But this is the way the game has gone now. The game is all about keeping possession of the ball. You know, the days where you get it and lump it have gone. And we are trying to bring this into our club soccer. But again, it takes time. Patterns of play. As I say to the kids, um, I was very fortunate I played back in England. We'd spend an hour doing patterns of play, the most boring exercise you've ever done. But again, the coach is trying to get patterns of play so that when it comes to the game, you're subconsciously playing this ball the way you want them to play. Um, so I, I, I try and be very creative when I do these patterns of play to make them interesting for them because I've been on that side of the coin. It's, it's very boring and monotonous doing passing drills. So think of ways where you can energize the kids to make it interesting and pick out little things that they would, could bring into what we're doing here. So a very basic little passing and moving drill that I, I like to do with them is, uh, again, I've color coordinated it. So you don't need balls there. So you're going to, Kate will check to the yellow cone in a minute, play a one-two with me, run around the blue cone, receive the ball at the orange, and play it into the blue. Sounds complicated, but it's not once we get it going. So she checks in, I play her the ball, she gives it back to me, sprints around that cone, I just play a nice little ball in there, and then I follow my pass, she goes down the line, play it down the line, check in with a call, give it back, run around, play her in, good touch, down the line, yep. Right, let's get two balls going. Ready? We'll get straight into it. Go. So let's have, a, let's have a nice call when you're checking in. Yeah, play it down the line. Good, I'll get out of your way. I'll stand in the middle, I think. 
Good. A little bit more talking. The player receiving the ball, I'd like to hear you talk a little bit more. What I've done over the years working with Capital is, you know, we are very much a passing team. You know, we don't like to see the ball. Unless we're in trouble in our own 18-yard box, then just smash it, get rid of it. Invariably, we want the girls passing. We want them passing and moving and being comfortable doing so. We don't want it to be like hot potato and feel so uncomfortable that they don't want the ball. You've got to make the kids want, want the ball. All right, good. So I'd spend a bit of time on that. Sometimes I do multiple passing drills. I put a couple in there. I, you know, um, I, I do multiple things because it can be pretty monotonous doing this. But what we're teaching the kids is patterns of play that we want to bring into a game. It doesn't suddenly come magically overnight that these kids can move the ball around or these players can move the ball around the field with the accuracy that they do. Again, <clears throat> long pass, short pass is important in games. So now what we're going to do is your check there, your play me the ball back, then we play a big diagonal over there, and your play a one-two with her. Yeah, and give it back. Yeah. So you play down the line, give it back, big diagonal, oh, unlucky, and then play it in, and play it back, yeah, down the line, no, sorry, that's all right, play it in, play down the line to her first, one of you scoot over here, play down the line, yeah, give it back to her, now big diagonal, now big diagonal, yeah, play it there, play it in, I'd get, normally I get one ball going just to keep it going, just so they understand it, big diagonal, play it in, play it back, down the line, down the line. Get ready over there, the ball. Good. Play back. Play there. So now you can see these have done this before, where they're moving it about one touch. Get a ball going over there. Go. Get two balls going. Go. Down the line. Give it back. Big diagonal. Bit more talking. On the short stuff, as much as much one touch as we can. On the short stuff. So the. The orange to blue should all be one touch. The orange to blue should all be one touch. So we're instilling in the kids to play straight balls, diagonal balls, long balls, short balls. A little bit quicker, a little bit quicker. Big diagonal. Increase the intensity a little bit. Take it up a notch, come on. As much one touch as we can. Bang, bang, come on, much one touch. This is how we want to be moving the ball around the field, as much one touch as we can. If you have to take a two, don't worry. Don't compromise on your quality. All right, good, good. So you can see we're slowly building up little patterns here. Giving, going, laying the ball off, player laying the ball off that we'd like to see in a game. One exercise I'll show you that I haven't got in that book. I, I think I may have done it last year. So uh, just get in a circle around me. This is another way of, of teaching your kids patterns of play. We all like to play in triangles, what I call pizza pies. A great way to get a pattern of play going, yeah, this will be the center of the circle, just get in the circle. So all we're doing is passing and moving in the circle. Spread out a minute. We'll have two balls going. Come in here, because you've done this before. Come in here. So the, the girls, they pass, they follow their pass, and like the hands of the clock, the ball goes round. So you pass the ball into me, follow your pass, I take a touch, and I play the ball out to you. Play it in. Pass and move, pass and move, pass and move. Next one in line, talk. Next one in line, talk. Ordinarily, I would have started off with just one ball, but here. This is a great warm-up. You want to warm-up before you play. This was our warm-up back in the UK. Um, everyone's had a touch of the ball. The heart's beating. And we hope to see this when we play a real game. 
So this team, I'm going to put a bit under pressure. One touch only. Go. One touch. Can we do the whole thing? Now imagine this in a game. Imagine this, if we can get the kids playing like this in a game. Slowly moving up the field, one touch in triangles. As I say, you can't defend against it. Because as a defender will come in, the ball's going to be moved. But again, we've got to teach the kids this. It's not suddenly just going to come on game day, you're going to see these kids unbelievably do this stuff. And it takes a lot of patience on our part and a lot of work on theirs. And then freeze. So then the last thing, I'd get them under a little bit of pressure, put a ball there. We'll see if we can get three balls going, two touch. Three balls going, two touch. Give me another player out here. So you can face that ball, I'll face this ball. Try and get into the circle. Everyone take a little step back. So we've had as many as four balls going, and there's, like, the kids have got to really process things very quickly, like in a game. Three balls going for 30 seconds. Go. Two touches. So I want to see you control it, pass it. A lot of talking. So here, very little downtime. Passing and moving. Yeah, I'll have the ball. I'll have the ball. I'll play. So a good touch in there. Again, get the ball out in front of you when you control the ball out in front and play it in. Yell at the ball. Good. Let's see if we can do one touch. Oh, one touch. One touch, one touch, one touch. Can we do it? Can we do it? Can we do it? Three balls, one touch. Three balls, one touch. Ah, killing me. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, cupcake. All right, good. So again, there's another way of doing your patterns of play. Again, if you were to put heart monitors on these girls, their heart's pounding. Great way to warm your kids up before you play. How many times you see these teams turn up for a game, put the goalkeeper in goal, 20 people in the line, smashing the ball past the goalkeeper. As all you're warming up is the goalkeeper's back. And you're not giving them a lot of confidence. No problem warming up the goalkeeper to one side, Get the kids here, get them moving. So when the ref does blow the whistle, they've all had touches of the ball. And you're instilling the way you want them to play. So how do we bring all this into a game? <laughs> Curve is based around a lot of small-sided games. As I said to the first group, I don't, I don't think I ever do 11 v 11. I leave that to clubs and coaches. You're not bringing us in to do 11 v 11. So we break the game down. Soccer's played in small-sided games. 2 v 1, 3 v 2, blah, blah, blah wherever, all over the field. And you've got to win those battles to move the ball on. And the ultimate battle is to win the ball up there, either have a shot or goal, put it in the back of the net. So we start off with um, five orange, six yellow. Doesn't matter what color you got, five orange, six yellow. And then just pick the cones up for us. Yeah, it's all right. Oh, six and seven then, sorry. Math wasn't my strongest. Just pick those cones up. Thanks. And uh, you know the deal, one orange, one yellow with a ball standing next to the goal. One orange, one yellow with a ball next to the goal. <clears throat> sorry, I'm going to move that goal. As I said before, one thing that we've done in Curver is multiple goals. Have as many goals on the field as you can. The kids love to score. You'll get more out of your kids because they're scoring lots of goals. Uh, I've done this, I did this exercise last week with them, and I think I had two other teams, so I had nearly 30 kids. We split them up, we put six goals out here. And again, you're going to see everything there is about the game in small-sided games, where you're going to see transition, change of direction, moves to beat players, finishing on goal. The deal is here, they can score on any four goals, just pass that ball, whether they shoot and score, shoot and miss, their corresponding colour comes out. So if I'm on the yellow team, and I shoot and score, yellow comes out, and we switch. So it's a fast-paced game. We encourage the kids to anticipate the shot. Don't wait for the ball go in, stand here, hits the back of the net, and then we go. Anticipate the ball coming off her foot, and explode into space. So what team has got the odd number? I'm going to be an orange. So I'm just going to pass the ball in. Get out there and scrimmage. All right. So you can score on any goals. We'll see if we can, these girls can bring in any of the patterns of play that we just worked on. Go, play. Yellow out. 
Yeah, all right, go. Speed. Can we change direction? Yeah, there we go there. Change direction. Go, yellow out, yeah. Excellent. There's a little triangle play. All right, and freeze. Oh, we missed. Freeze. Again there, we see it there. There's the triangle that we just worked on. So she played the ball in here, and then she went over there, and she broke through. Unfortunately, she missed. So I'd be on a case there, because there's no goalkeeper. Go, play. Yellow out. Orange, come on, get that ball. Go, finish, finish, finish. Yeah, go. Play. Oh, my bad. Keep playing, keep playing, keep playing. Yellow out, yellow out, yellow out. Good, Peyton, good. Freeze. Peyton, did you tell her to turn? Did you tell her she had time? Don't you like her? You've known her since she was six. Again, they forget that they've got to communicate. This is something that I do a lot. You know, the, the girls are notorious. They're very shy when they're out here. Like, if I'm playing the ball into Olivia there, you've got to tell her that she doesn't know that there could be a player behind her. So as you play the ball in, time, take touch, time, time, time. So she can, she can relax a little bit. If there's a man on, tell her a man on. That's always work in progress. You'll find, even when the kids go off to college, you're lucky if you can get them talking. Yet you get them that side of it, and they talk for America. They won't shut up. You put them on the magical turf, shuts them up. Cut a bit of this, put it in their bedroom, make them stand on it. It'll shut them up. Does, doesn't it? How many times I tell you to talk? Ready? Play. Oh. I need the ball. Finish. Finish. Quick. Go. Take it. Go. Keep it moving. Orange, orange, orange. Yeah, play. Go. Play. Stop dribbling. Good. Keep it going. Keep it going. Oh, that's a great ball. That is a great ball. Finish, Kate. Unlucky. Orange out. Orange out. Orange out. Oh, we give the ball away. Orange out. Tell her to turn. Go. Orange out. Good. So we're seeing the girls try to make the triangles. Yellow finish. Yellow out. Good. I like that pass. Orange out. Orange out. Spread out. Take a touch, finish. Orange out, orange out. Hold on, we need an orange on that cone gate down there. Play a ball in. Play another ball in somewhere. And then get one. Oh, don't pass to the other team. Finish, finish, finish. Good girl. Go. Go. Good touch. Finish, 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 finish. Excellent girl. Good girl. Excellent. All right. Freeze. So you see two great examples of what we would like to see in a game. Number one, someone's pinged the ball into her. That's not a bad first touch for a ball that's come in. Her first touch banged towards goal. She scored. And then someone played a beautiful through ball there. Again, you'll be surprised what you can get out of the kids in these games. And don't be afraid to stop it and pick things out. You don't want to keep on. There's a fine line on how much stopping you should do and how much communication you should do. When something works well, point that out. When there's a scenario that they didn't do, point that out. Because they've got to learn. They've got to learn by their mistakes. And then when they do something really well, point that out. If they fall down on it, just tell them their mistakes. Encourage them. Constructive criticism. Show them what they perhaps could have done. And hopefully next time it will come on board. But again here, you're seeing a very fast action game. Um, I probably would go to 5v5, possibly, if you've got big teams, spread it out more. If you can, put six goals in, even better. So you could put two goals down the sideline. But again, they love this kind of thing. They like this kind... And this is their scrimmage, as I said before. We don't scrimmage. This is the scrimmage. And we're trying to bring all the ball mastery stuff in. I see someone do a U-turn. Someone did a, um, a, a, just a basic cut. Someone did a step over. So you're, you're, you're building a body of work out, up from your ball mastery into trying, this is the hardest thing to do. I know we've got a few college players sitting down there and we've got some pros that I've worked with. Even them, trying to get them to do it in a game is tough. You know, at times, the higher up you go, the fear factor of making mistakes comes in. At, at every level of soccer, you know, people are so worried about, they want to please you all the time. They want to please the parents, they want to please the coaches. So they take the easy way out. They just do stuff that, oh, I don't want to get outside my, my comfort zone. Well, try and get the kids to get out of the comfort zone. That's how we're going to create better players. That's how we're going to develop better clubs, better teams, and all the way through the pyramid, 
at the top end, one of these days we're going to create a men's national team that's got a little bit more confidence than it's got. And it takes time. It takes time. So um, we, we'll go on with this a little bit more and I'll show you a few variations. Go. Let's see if we can get those triangles going. Good. Orange out. All right, yellow out, yellow out. Let, yellow's gone. Give me a yellow on that cone over there. Yellow on the cone, somebody. Someone's come off a cone. Haley, 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 get over there, quick. Finish. Oh, quick, who wants me? Yeah, turn, 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 turn. Oh, finish. Go. You'll find if you do play this game, you're constantly saying yellow out, orange out, because the kids forget, especially when they shoot and miss. Finish, finish, finish. Turn, turn, turn. Good, good, good. Again there, look, comfortable taking the ball. She turned nicely. Yeah, take a touch, take a touch. There we go. Oh, there we go, a little step, step on. All right, and rest, and rest. All right, if, you got water or not? No, you don't need any. All right, a couple of variations to all this. Again, this, this could go for 15, 20 minutes. The girls love, they love playing this game. Um, I've done it with goalkeepers, where I've brought in four big goals. So we can bring our goalkeepers in as well, where we also have players on the side, and if you've got four goalkeepers, do it with two goalkeepers. Right, a little variation to some of this. This is a tough drill. It's encouraging them to <clears throat> support each other, something that can be a weakness in a team where they will ball watch and not support people. So we're, we're just to start with, the four on the outside, or the people on the outside, you can have a rest for a minute. You can get a suntan for a minute. We'll have one more in. Let me go, let's go 4v4, just for a minute, and we're, we're, uh, we're trade players in. We'll see if we can get this working. So 4v4. All right, now, instead of the girls just getting it and smashing it into the back of the net, before they can score, they've got to make a pass through the gate. This is not an easy drill. This is not easy, because you know, it's a lot easier to defend it. But what you'll see here is the triangular stuff that we've been doing, and the patterns of play really coming in with support in action. So if, um, if you just move down there a little bit. Yeah, get on that piece of that circle there. So she's got to anticipate. She knows I can't score because I've got to play the ball to her first. So she'll make a good run down the wing. I play the boot through there. Finish. Get those wheels moving. Yeah, let's do it again. Call for the ball. So she makes, she, hold on. So she knows I've, I can't score. So she's got to make a run. So make a run, call for the ball, first time finish, bang. Oh my lord. I hope you're not the striker. But again, that's how we're encouraging. We'd love our kids to do that, wouldn't we? We see the pros do it, they play a ball in, in. someone's rushing in, bang, and they crash it into the back of the net. Great feeling when you see the kids do it. Let's see if they can do it. So the rest of you just take a, get a suntan off the field, and we'll bring you in. Go, play. So you can't score unless you make a putt, putt, finish. Go, play it in. People on the outside, you can play a build ball in for them. Play a ball in, play a ball in. Chop, chop. Someone play a ball in, yep. Good. There it is, all that is nearly. Go, play a ball in, play a ball in. People outside, play a ball in. Finish. There it is. Oh, nearly, nearly. Switch it. Play, 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 play. Go, go. Player, player, player. Finish. Oh, nearly. Get a ball. Go. Again, you're, you're giving them a little puzzle. Keep going, get a ball. You're giving them a puzzle to work out. How can I get and support my player? How can I score? There it is there, she scored, good goal, play. Finish, go, play that ball there, Olivia. And in time, I'm rushing them a lot here, in time, they will get it. You can make it a bit bigger, so that uh, they've got more opportunity to make these runs. And uh, it's pretty rewarding when you see a team build the play up, play a nice little ball in, overlapping run, finish on goal. Good, finish. Go. Go on, last one. See if we can get a winner. Oh, nearly. Quick, play a ball in. Play a ball in, someone. Finish. One, two. Change direction. You fell over fresh air. 
Finish? Good, all right, good. So you, you see the girls achieving it, they're getting it. And one other little thing that we've done with the, this, this stuff, kind of stuff, just bring the goals to the middle, pick the cones up. Bring all the goals into the center circle. You see it there, there, there. So they already know what we're doing. So we do a lot of this stuff. I, I like to try and give them some puzzles to work out. So what we've done with a lot of the curver exercises is reverse the goals. Make them think a little bit on how can I score. Give us that, Peyton, give us that ball. So again here, you know, Peyton, come out here for a minute. So again, if we're going it on our own, the kids have got to do change of direction moves, otherwise you're just going to keep running. So here, great opportunity here. So for me to do here, I can do a change of direction move. Now I can score. The other thing you'll see is just positional sense. So if Peyton's got the ball there, as I say to the girls, if I'm standing here, can I score? Peyton passes the ball to me. I've still got work to do to get there. So I've still got work to do to get there. But if, if I'm standing here now, so to, I've made myself a better player just by taking three steps back. Now if Peyton plays me the ball, I can either hit it in first time or I can take a touch. So we're teaching the kids some positional sense on a field. So here, what we do here, <clears throat> we go 3v3, yeah, we go straight into 3v3 because we're running out of time. I'd normally build it up 2v2, 3v3, and then play 4v4. So you sprint, two of you go around the outside, coming through the middle, two of you, ran, three of you, around the outside, coming through the middle, score on any goal. All set, go! You just play a ball down the middle, see what they do. So we're trying to, we're trying to play triangles. Can we play triangles? There it is there. She's got her head up. Sing, Kate. Play. Play it. Good. Oh, didn't get her head up. Player. Excellent. Little run off the ball there. Again, you're seeing these girls, they're getting their heads up, they're changing direction. They're trying to work the puzzle out under pressure. How can they score? Go. Keep going. Go. That's dead, go. All right, last one. <clears throat> and again, I, I don't normally go to 4v4, but I'll just show you in case you're working with bigger teams. So we go 4v4, uh, three of you that way, three yellows over here, four yellows over here, and one, two, and three, yeah, go there. All right, so I'll make it competitive. So we're gonna play 4v4, Two orange, two yellows, run around the goal. You can hu hustle each other a little bit on the way around. The guys love this. 4v4 here, two yellows, two orange, run around the goal. Again, you can, like NASCAR, you can hustle each other going around the corner. Yeah, spread out. Let's see we can score with triangles. Go! So now spread out, spread out, spread out. Can we make a triangle? Keep playing, keep playing. So there's triangles there, nearly, nearly, nearly. It's tough on a gym floor because the ball's rolling away a lot, but you get the idea. She needs help. Get it out of there, get it out of there. Turn. Finish. Oh, keep it in, play. Finish. Good. Again, it's, it's short bursts of energy with lots of opportunities to score. Go. Where's her angle? Where's her passing lane? Where's her passing lane? Good. Nearly. Play. Good, good. Oh, where's that first touch? Oh, good tackle, that balloon. Spread out, spread out, spread out. Go. Go. 
That's dead. Go. Someone stay out there from Orange. Player. Finish first time. Oh, there it was. Get out. Spread out. Spread out. Good. Finish, finish. Uh, finally, good. All right. So you see there, again, if you want a variation of it, put the cones down again. Yeah? If you've only got a small amount, just put three goals down. So you could have two up here, one down there. If you've only, you say, only nine kids turn up for practice, you know, um, you can do that. You can make it smaller like that. So there's lots of variations you can do with the, if you've got the opportunity for pug goals or some kind of goals that you can put down. Um, a lot of my practices that I do, even when we do, if we do do a scrimmage, you know, I'll have two goals and I'll turn them that way and then let them scrimmage on, you know, on a half field. So that, because uh, what, what you tend to get, the kids just get it and smash it all the time. We're trying to encourage them in our passing receiving sessions to pass the build the play up and we're encouraging them to support each other because they can't score from here. They've got to have a receiver on the other side and we're getting movement off the ball. So uh, just come out, ladies. Just come out here on the line here. So you can see again how we build everything up from our ball mastery um, and uh, our passing receiving. Think of some drills. Think about what your topics are. Um, uh, you know, try and, and it's tough. We've all got busy lives and we've got a lot going on. But try not to do practices on the fly because sometimes you can get really flustered. I remember back in the day doing stuff on the fly. I think, oh man, I wish I'd never done that now. And even now, I mean, I've been coaching for nearly 40 odd years. I still write stuff down what I'm going to do. And I always have a backup as well in case it don't work. And, and, and it will make your life a lot more enjoyable because you know, it's not easy having groups of kids, every one of them looking at you for the next instruction and you're like, oh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. What? And you forget sometimes. So try and scribble some stuff down, come to a practice prepared and think of ways during the practice how can I achieve my end goal? Our end goal here was passing, moving, finishing on goal. Build that up. How can I do it with no pressure to, so they can understand what we're trying to do? Limited pressure. And then obviously, again, as we said in the last session, you've got to do it full pressure. Because that's the only way that they're going to fail. And they're going to, after failing, they will then um, work out how to do it correctly or they will do it correctly straight off the bat. And we can then, if we can ramp it up with loads of restrictions. You know, you could play 3v2, 4v2 here and penalize the, the, the four for not scoring because they're playing against two. So be creative with it, you know. Um, a lot of this stuff that you see in the books is just, even in our stuff, is the foundation. And then add stuff to it, yeah? If you're adding stuff to anything I've got in that book, let me know, shoot me an email because I've put it straight into my curriculum. I'm not proud, I'll steal anything. Anything that makes the kids better, it's all about making these better. Not, it's not about us, it's about them. But we've got to have the skills and the knowledge and the technique to put this stuff across. And they've got to be challenged. We only have them for one hour. Challenge your kids for an hour and get as much done as you can in one hour. And that's why a lot of my stuff is multitasking because I want them touching lots and lots of stuff. You know, uh, if you get a chance to watch this team play, this is a really nice team to watch. It, you know, even if I say so myself, they do move the ball around. You've got different sizes, very athletic girls. Um, they're not going to win everything. It's impossible, you know. Uh, but they try and play it in the right way. They get it down and they pass it and they move it. And they're not afraid to try the stuff in the correct areas. Give them a little bow. A little clap. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the sessions. If there any questions? Anyone got any questions or anything? I'm, I'm going to be hanging around for a while having lunch if you want to shoot by. Uh, thanks a lot for your attention. All those sessions, as I say, are in that box down there in the book. Um, if, if you're interested in any team training, as I said to the past, to the, if you weren't here before, we don't run soccer teams. Although I'm associated with Capital United, I don't actually, I'm not really anything to do with Capital United. I'm just the trainer for 21 years that I've been there. Um, so we do work with a lot of clubs in the Capital District, from the Alley Cats to Capu. First Touch, Burnt Hills, Rotterdam, FC Dutchman. They see the value of bringing us in, you know, and, and working with their teams and working with their coaches. I like to do a lot of professional development. We don't do enough of this stuff, having coaches together, bouncing ideas off each other. We need to do more of this because as coaches, we need to get better 
And we need to learn as much as the kids are learning. The kids are learning all this stuff, so the kids are going like this, and some of the coaches are going like that, because there's not enough professional development put on. So somehow we've got to encourage more professional development. I love going. I go, we have our own Curva convention in California, and I, as much as I can, I go to the soccer conventions. You know, I'm a, um, unfortunately, I'm addicted to the game, so I'm watching 10 Premier League games a weekend and MLS and, and stuff like this. And uh, the kids don't watch enough. That's one thing I will say. Encourage your kids to watch the pros. I mean, this week we've just had the, the women's stuff. How many of you watched the women's teams this week? Who, who went? Some of you guys went, didn't you? Did you go to the game? So again, the, the, you know, encourage the kids to watch it. I know those two went because I see them on, um, on the Facebook. If you want to follow us on Facebook, we have 10,000 people follow us. We put stuff up every single day. We put little clips up that you can work with the kids. Go to YouTube, type in Curva. There's a million of them flash up in front of you. From around the world, what the kids are doing to improve. Bring it into your practices. I'm not saying that Curve is the B end and all everything, but it should be a part of your practice. Technical work should be a big part of your practice. Because without the technical work, you can have the best tactics in the world. But if a kid can't control the ball, tactics mean nothing. You know? So with the tactics come the technical stuff. And if we can teach our kids technical work, we can do more advanced tactical work with them. You know, as I say to these kids, and there's some college people here, and they will probably back this up, when you go to college, your college coach isn't going to teach you any of this. They want the finished article. And if you're not the finished article on most programs, you're either not on the roster or you're not even playing. Because they will teach you tactics till they're blue in the face, and they will get you as fit as you've ever been. And Ian's just finished up at Plattsburgh here, tell you that. They get you as fit as you've ever been, but they got no time to teach you to get a first touch, to cut, to do this, scissors, all this stuff, because they want people like us to produce the finish article, and then they round it off into their systems of play. They do a lot of passing. They will do a tremendous amount of patterns of play and, and, and that kind of stuff. So unless the kids are going off to college now, and at all levels of college, from Division Three to Division One, the standard is amazing. You know, you look in the Northeast, and I'm going off topic a little bit. The Northeast is the hub of Division Three. You've got the best teams in the country in the Northeast. In this area, you've got some great teams from Plattsburgh, Potsdam, St. Lawrence, Clarkson up there. Then you come down here, Union, RPI, Skidmore. You go to the SUNY New Pulse, Oneonta, National Champions. It goes on and on. If you look at their rosters, they've got 32 number ones. You're coaching clubs where you'll have five or six number ones. Some kids that are not bad, some kids that, and some kids that have just started, and you've got to deal with that in a practice. Whereas these college coaches are blessed. They've got 32 number ones. Now, how do they cut it down? They may bring in 40 number ones. Well, they're cut it down. If they hear a kid not talking, yeah, Jeff's a coach at Plattsburgh, he'll tell you. Uh, don't fancy that kid. He doesn't speak in a game. There's a reason to cut. They're looking for reasons to cut. They bring these numbers in because they want to cherry pick, and then they start chop, 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 chop. It's cutthroat. So in a practice, college, if you ever get the chance to go to a college practice, it's pretty intense. Fights break out, they're kicking each other, they're getting after it, aren't you? You're getting after it because you want to be on the, not only do you want to be on the roster, you want to be on the number 11 guys at start. And there's no friends. So I try to prepare our older kids. CapU has a, a pretty good older team. Um, prepare them for college, what it's going to be like. Because some of them go to college and it's nothing what they expect. They thought it was going to be like their high school. Nothing like it. And uh, if we can get them just talking a little bit more, I tell them, find a way to stand out. Because as a freshman, if you're trying to take a senior spot, trust me, they're kicking you a couple of times in practice. They're not letting you get in the way of anything because they don't want to be sitting on the bench in their senior year. So I hope you got something out of it. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with you. Um, and uh, I'll be around if you need any, any questions. Thank you. Good work, girls. Put it over there.